I'm Steve Lukianic. And I'm Nicole Corbin. And we are two of the producers of 13 Families Life After Columbine. A lot of people have said to us, well, you know, there were 15 people that lost their lives that day, and yet your movie is called 13 Families. But what a lot of people don't understand is uh, the families of the two killers from the get-go, they, for their own choosing, didn't really become a part of the bond that these other families of the victims had. Um, right from the start, the 13 families of the murder victims really formed this unique bond that they, that they really relied on each other to get through this tragedy. The Columbine families, it was very unique. They, their children were all going to this high school. They all lived within this very small community in, near, in Littleton. So it allowed them to, to form that bond, which really helped them to heal. These families, while they do all share this bond, they are very different people. They've healed in different places. Um, some of them are still angry, some of them aren't. There's just, there's such a caveat of different emotions that really encompasses it. We originally sat down and talked with one of the family members and, and told them, look, we've, we want you to, to give you a platform to tell your own story. We don't think that has ever been done for them before. Um, we didn't come at them with, here's the agenda, here's our ideas. We wanted to say to them, what stories would you share if you were given the opportunity? What would you want the world to know about your experience with this? What was your journey? When we first approached them, you know, the tragedy had happened about six years earlier. Mm -hmm and they, the wounds were still very raw. And when we first told them that we wanted to do this project, they were not at all agreeable to it. In fact, most of them said, you know, why would we want to rip the Band-Aids off? You know, we're just in the process of healing. But that's what we encouraged them to do because we said, you know, for all the people that knew about Columbine, that knew about you and that saw your loss, they want to know what happened. They want to know what happened when the cameras went away. And that's what we don't always see with media. We don't see what happens after these terrible shootings and tragedies, the ripple effect that happens with the families that are left to pick up the pieces. All three of us, we have a producing partner, Mark Catcher, and all three of us had a very personal connection to Columbine. Mark and I had grown up in the suburbs of Denver, very close to Columbine High School. Nicole has family who were living right across the street when the tragedy happened. So when this project came about, we came at it from a very personal place. And I think that was a huge reason why the Columbine families felt that they could trust us. We started production on 13 Families in June of 2006 when they broke ground for the Columbine Memorial. We didn't finish production until the 10 year anniversary, which happened in 2009, April of 2009. Um, and, and then a huge part of the lead up to that was really earning the trust of these families. We, we set out to do this film thinking, oh, well, how hard will it be? We'll fly to Denver, we'll sleep on friends' floors. Yeah, we'll... we live in Los Angeles and we've obviously filmed this in the Denver area. So we just, we work during the week. On the weekends we flew to Denver to film with the families. It was a challenge to say the least yeah. because we would be working our jobs, we would be flying there on weekends, we would be filming, we'd be coming back. And, and, and typically the way we would do this, especially in the early days, we would go film with one family and then we would, before we left Denver, we would meet with another family just to meet with them. We wouldn't turn the cameras on. Mm -hmm. We just would meet with them and try to inter tell them what we were doing and, and have them get a feel mm -hmm. for it. People have said to us, you know, very accusatory, almost like, well, who's profiting from this movie? And you know, uh, you know you're, you're profiting off of these children that died. And, the crazy thing is, I mean, we, we said this from the get-go and we told the Columbine families this, we will likely never see a profit from this film. If we recoup our costs, we'll be, be grateful. Right. Um, that was not at all the reason why we set out to do this by any means to make money. The budget on 13 Families is roughly in the neighborhood of about $400,000. And that's because this project was done over the course of a good five years. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had a lot of people working for us deferred, professional people who typically charge a lot for their time, who worked for us knowing that, you know, let find, will pay me when you sell the film. We owe a lot of people a lot of money. The bottom line is that's it. We, I mean, we, we were so grateful to these people that helped us. We never could have finished this film yeah. without the people that gave their time and their talents. Trust was the key and it was the whole backbone of this project. If we had betrayed that in any way, it would have, the whole thing would have collapsed like a house of cards. I think you, if you don't have a passion for what you're working on, 
there's no way you, you will finish it. There's no way to get it done. You have to really be in love with what you're working on. And we were really honored that the 13 families shared their story with us. We submitted to ArcLight because when our, one of our executive producers heard about this, we hadn't heard about this, this festival, and he called us and he said, did you guys hear about this? Well, right away when we knew that it would be based on you know people seeing our trailer and watching it, that was really attractive to us. It was really just getting a chance to get 13 families seen in that type of environment. And the ArcLight, it's one of the most beautiful theaters in Hollywood, so yeah. to be able to have it. This is our home base, too. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that we've, that we've worked with and that worked on the film that they even haven't seen it yet. So we thought, what better thing than to have it at the ArcLight in Hollywood because Perfect. the people that worked on it could actually see it at a gorgeous spot.